Today's video is primarily targeted towards those of you out there who are newbies to the luxury fashion world and that's because I'm going to be giving you guys the 10 tips that I wish I knew before starting my luxury fashion journey. It always helps doesn't it when someone a little bit more experienced or who has gone through a lot of the mistakes or pitfalls of their own journey to be able to impart that wisdom. But these are just 10 and maybe kind of 11 shall I say just give you a bonus at the end of the tips that I wish I heard when I started because boy they would have saved me a lot of expensive mistakes. So let's start off of course with tip number one and this is primarily for those of you out there who are buying your first big investment purchase. So that's probably going to be for most of us out there a luxury handbag and it's probably going to be in the several thousands of pounds. So my best piece of advice for those of you out there who've been lusting after a handbag is to focus on a classic item from a well-established fashion house and not go towards those that are trendy, whether that be in terms of the style or a pop and brand at the moment, or even in a colorway that is really in right now. The reason obviously that I mentioned this is pretty straightforward. One, you obviously get the longevity of your item because it is classic, so think the Chanel, um, as is, even if I have an opinion about them, those handbags are classic. You will know from the research that I'm sure you will do online, the internet is your friend here, which fashion houses are long established, which have the history, the longevity, the prestige even, and which ones are more trendy. Even trendy ones that are in the aforementioned prestigious and established fashion houses, chances are if it's trendy, you're probably gonna get over it just as quickly as it came into season. So I would heavily, heavily, heavily stress that you wanna go for a classic item especially if it's your first. I've been in positions before where I've spent significant amounts of money on bags, shoes, and ready to wear that I've honestly not really touched since. I would highly suggest you go for a classic, even if you do have to save up a little bit longer. It is certainly worth it in the long run. Plus, that means when you are also 60 or 70 years old, you will still be rocking those items. After I think you've established your collection, that's when you can start including, you know, funky colors, some funky styles, some more seasonal ones. And especially with the fact that obviously over time our tastes change. When I started my luxury buying career, I think I was first interested around like 18, 19 years old. And honestly, if I look back to my fashion then, if I look at my old photos then of what I was wearing and the bags that I was rocking then, I cringe at what I liked before and the, the heinous amount of money that I would spend on luxury goods or otherwise. And I thought I looked super cool. Nowadays, fast forward, I don't even wanna look at those photos. And so if you're gonna spend a lot of money in luxury fashion, unless you are super minted, in which case I guess this does not necessarily apply to you, if you know you're somebody that saves for their luxury and has goals for that money, then you should definitely, definitely stick towards the tried and true. It seems basic and it might seem like everyone else has that item, but it, everyone has the item for a reason. And to be honest, it's really a first world problem thing because no one really, outside of Instagram, which pushes algorithms that everybody has the same item, now on to tip number two, and this is across all of luxury fashion. When you are dropping that amount of money on something, look at the item and say to yourself, if that brand logo was not there, whether it's the clasp on a bag or the logo on the side of a shoe, would I still want to buy the item? And the reason that I ask this is I suppose within all of us, we have this innate, I guess, uh, admiration or somewhat, I guess, flashy or uh, what's the word, gaudiness, that we want to share the brand. We want to say, oh, this is a Chanel bag. This is a little bit of a flex, but it's also a pride point, isn't it? It's a point of prestige, like I mentioned before, that you've worked this hard, you've managed to amass and part with that amount of money. And obviously with the brand comes, I guess, the recognition of it. But regardless of the item, I always like to look at it and say to myself, you know, Mel, if this Rolex watch, for example, had all the same features, but no little crown insignia on it, if my Chanel bag did not have the double CCs on the class, would I still like it? And do you know what? For all of my items, I really look at them from afar and I appreciate the craftsmanship. I appreciate the style. And I guess a good example would be my Chanel reissue, where it doesn't actually have a Chanel logo on it, but because of all the nice little details that Chanel herself put into the bag and the history and the stories that come behind the bag, and also it's a very classic shape, 
the classic style and the versatility of the bag. That's what makes me like the bag. And I personally don't even like having logo menus on things anyway. I find that personally a little bit crass. It's not really my style. I like things to be a little bit more understated. And yeah, of course, items on bags and shoes, you know, especially if they're of the higher tier fashion house, they're probably going to have a logo on it. But I see the value in the shape and design and versatility of the item foremost before I then consider the brand. I think if you're just getting it for the brand, you're getting it for the wrong reason. That's totally the wrong reason to get into luxury fashion because ultimately this item will not bring you joy. It will just dent your wallet quite a lot. It should be about craftsmanship, style. You gotta really love the item first. And it just so then happens to be part of the brand, then fair enough. And a lot of my items nowadays that I'm finding I'm purchasing, especially if I've got all the basics items down, I'm actually buying items which don't really have discernible logos. So case in point, recently I just bought myself a Kelly 18 belt. And honestly, it's only for those in the know who know that kind of lock mechanism. Now on to tip number three, and this one is a bit more specific to those of you who are considering buying pre-love because we all know it's a hard world out there, whether it's because you want something vintage or you just want something a little bit, well, better priced. For you, this tip will hopefully be helpful. And that is just a life saying, life lesson, if you will, of if something is too good to be true, it usually is. A lot of people think price upfront when it comes to buying pre-love, because obviously that is the main draw, the main driving factor of why it's so popular to buy luxury on there nowadays. But also there are a ton of other factors like the safety, security, authenticity of it all that comes into play, which, okay, you can't put a quantity on it in terms of price, but the hassle and the, honestly, the mental drain it would take for all the drama to be unpicked and resolved, I personally don't think it's worth it to make that price saving. I mean, there's tons of resources online. The internet, again, is your friend. There's loads of influencers, I'm sure, potentially in your local area that will be able to attest to proper, you know, real life organic reviews. And unless you can go and get third parties to verify and you're willing to go through all that kind of rigmarole or if you can see the item in person, then you're always gonna run that risk. So I always like to buy my, my luxury straight from the supplier or from a reputable third party like a Louise Via Roma, my Teresa, Farfetch, Harrods, that kind of thing. But if that's not the route for you, just proceed with caution, but know that the price might be lower, but there is a different price paid later. As they say, fast money, slow problems. Now onto tip number four. And this one is honestly gonna be quite difficult for those of you out there who are fellow magpies. And so this tip is about sticking to what you're saving for and not getting distracted by the other wonderful shiny things that may come your way. So as an example, say you are saving for, controversial, a classic flap from Chanel. That is probably going for what nowadays, an average of what, six, 7,000 pounds, depending on the size that you get. But if you really want that item and you cannot get it out of your head, you know, I know it's a lot of money, but even let's say you're getting to the 3,000 pound, 4,000 pound mark and you're actually like, oh, well actually a wallet on chain is a kind of similar size, but it's a fraction of the price. However, if it's honestly something that you are going to still want even after you get the wallet on chain, then you may as well cut out the middleman and just hold firm. If you want something, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. But actually, I think part of the satisfaction and the gratitude that I feel anyway is when I have to work for an item, save towards the item that you want because you'll ultimately longer term be much happier and you'll also be resolute in that you really, really want the item and you're not going to kind of backtrack or change your mind. Cheap is expensive and expensive is cheap. Even if you buy lots of cheap things that, you know, will you know, maybe distract you. That's not gonna give you the same kind of satisfaction, nor is it actually gonna be better on your wallet longer term than if you were just to get one thing that is expensive, but you're gonna use all the time. Early on in my luxury buying career, I have so much tap that I'm even now still trying to shift because I bought loads of distraction pieces. Had I actually channeled the money at the time into something more classic, I would have been much better off. Now on to tip number five, and this kind of leads quite nicely from the previous point, and that's around if you're not 100% in love with an item, don't buy it. Doesn't matter if it's trendy, doesn't matter if all the influencers and bloggers and celebrities have it. Just because it's in or you feel kind of like peer pressure to get it, 
is not a good enough reason to get the item. You have to be in love with it. And if there is no reason you should be spending thousands upon thousands of pounds potentially on an item that does not serve you and serve your purposes. Obviously, when it comes to resale, it helps you know, knowing which items are the most popular. But beyond that, if you have no intention of reselling, then honestly, there is no reason to be considering trends or what other people have. It's all about you and your money and no one should tell you otherwise. And obviously that's not accounting for when styles change. Obviously you've got to dip your toes in the water just to see if that's something that floats your boats. And if that's the case, then maybe you can consider getting maybe a high street dupe or something similar without the financial dent. Now onto tip number six, and this is around the value or the power of money now. Money now is worth more than money later. So if you want something now, obviously within the financial constraints that you're operating in, let's not get ourselves into debt people, that's a separate point that I will mention. But if you have the capacity to buy something now and avoid price increases, inflation, then you should definitely consider getting it now versus waiting. I always think nostalgically around the price, for example, of Freddo's, a popular chocolate in the UK. They were once 5p or maybe 10p. Now, I don't even wanna know. I think they're probably like two pounds. And that's just a matter of what? That is just the power of time. And so to avoid future disappointments and to stop the goalposts moving ever more into the future, ever more into the impossible, make a plan on how to get the item sooner rather than later. There are so many ways that you can, I guess, increase your income so that you can get the item a lot quicker if that's so what you want, which leads us nicely into point number seven. And that is, while I recommend you get something now rather than later, if you have the means, for those of you that do not have the means, especially if it's your first luxury purchase, do not get yourself into debt. It is just not worth it. It will haunt you potentially for the rest of your life if gone unmanaged. You know, I have been there and done that in terms of when I got my first paycheck, I just like blew it all on stuff. And right now I'm still trying to get rid of that stuff because it's no longer serves me any purposes. It's just basically like having cash sat on your shoe rack or in your wardrobe that cannot be liquidated. I should have spent that money on educating myself or, you know, putting it into savings. But obviously it is your life proceed with caution, but I would highly recommend against going through schemes like the Klarna's of the world. I know nowadays luxury brands are offering those and I think that is a very scary prospect and kind of predatory actually towards the younger generation. That's all I can say on that because I'm not a financial advisor. Now we are on to tip number eight and that is again on the topic of money management or rather loyalty management. And that is, do not get something for nothing. I know it might seem like a one-way exchange when you're parting with thousands of pounds essentially on an item. If you can get something on a discount or a deal, you can absolutely take advantage of a bunch of schemes for loyalty or even cashback that are at your disposal. And if you're sensible about it, you can rack them up and redeem them at a later point. So as an example, I use my American Express to buy my luxury, but American Express gives great loyalty in terms of like cash back. They also give you points. They also have redeemable extra cash back on certain stores that are listed on their page. And many a time, Harrods has come up as a place where they give additional, for example, 50 pound cash back over a certain spend. And then meanwhile, I'll buy the item there for at Harrods using my American Express, but I also have a Harrods rewards card. With that, I earn X amount of additional points and I get other members perks and early access to things. And I can also get money off the item as well. Not only that, obviously creating relationships with good sales associates that you get on with will mean that you're invited to potentially private events or early access sales. Those kind of things are intangible benefits, but definitely worth mentioning. I think brands increasingly realize they have to do more for the client than just offering a product. It's the whole experience. And if you can definitely take advantage of a lot of the loyalty schemes or cash back schemes that are available to you, then you will be all the better off long term. Now we're on to point number nine as we almost end this video. And this is more of a practical word of advice for those of you out there, especially who are buying your first big luxury purchase. 
And that is around having the consistency of your love for luxury fashion with your ability to maintain that lifestyle. And essentially what I mean by that is if you cannot afford to lose the item, I don't necessarily think you can afford to have that item because luxury fashion is just one rung of a whole bunch of things you've got to have in order to be able to maintain those items and secure them safely, right? Because if you have lots of luxury items, but you don't have the infrastructure like security cameras potentially, or safe, or other kind of, you know, living in a nicer neighborhood or a number of other countless factors that you can rattle off, I'm sure. If you don't have the means to protect your items, wearing a Chanel bag, buying a Chanel bag is not necessary going to be the best thing for you. Security and safety is something that I cover a lot when I talk about luxury fashion and especially for items that are a little bit more recognized and have the logo more uh, prominent on the item. I always believe that, you know, you've got to buy the item knowing full well the risks involved, the full knowing full well that you might be a target. And if you don't have the infrastructure around you, the support or are willing to invest in that going forward, then potentially those items are not the best for you. And now on to point number 10, and this is hopefully a nice positive one to kind of end on. Life is too short to save your best for best. If you have wonderful handbags and shoes and ready to wear, just gathering dust in your wardrobe or just on a shelf, that is no way to spend your hard earned money. I really have over the years changed my attitude on, you know, preserving my best till best. I always wanted to have my Chanel bags, for example, just on the shelf, pristine and you know I do have a display so you know don't get me wrong I do love to stare at them I'm really a believer in wearing out your finest for any kind of occasion as long as it's obviously kind of appropriate you don't want to be attracting unwanted attention or wherever you go see point number nine for more information but in all seriousness I believe that life is really too short to just have items for special occasions. You never know what tomorrow will bring. We do not have crystal balls in front of us. We're not fortune tellers. So you definitely wanna make sure that you enjoy your items while you have them because every item that you own is essentially on a loan to you because once you leave this earth and we all do at some point, right? Then the item is no longer yours. You can't take it with you, but you can take your experiences and you know, your memories. And if you are able to therefore spend as much time using and enjoying those items as you can, I think that will be a much better use of your time, energy, money than just having it on a shelf. I do try and make sure that I wear different things that I have in my wardrobe on different occasions and not try and reach for the same stuff because all those items serve me for different reasons. If they don't, they're out of my wardrobe, but if they're in, then I wanna get the use out of them. That's why I wear my Rolex, even to work, even if people will think that's gaudy and crass and whatnot, I don't care because the item gives me joy. There is a finite amount of time that I will be able to enjoy this item. So definitely, if you buy an item, especially if it's your first one, please don't just save it in the back of your closet or on a shelf or something. Go out and enjoy it, even if it gets scratched, even if it gets creased, it's your creases, it's your stories. And I have the coolest stories with my items. And so it'd be a really crying shame if you started your luxury journey by buying something that you were too afraid to use, because then I honestly think you probably shouldn't buy it because you're not gonna really enjoy it and appreciate it. But with all of that being said, those were my 10 luxury buying tips for those of you that are just starting out the luxury journey. It's such an exciting time to be able to get your first luxury item. So I wish you all the best just to end this video off with a nice note. It's not just always about the stuff that will bring you joy, even though I'm sure for many of you out there, it will be certainly a big milestone achievement and potentially ticking off a dream or bucket list kind of item. You know, things are not just everything in life. They are just material objects that will serve you for a point in time, potentially a little bit longer, but ultimately it is you and your experiences and the people around you and the moments that you make that are gonna be the defining factor of a life well lived. I for one have a lot of luxury items. I'm very privileged to be able to say that. But I also have the not so great privilege of having to also declutter. And that's just also something I guess to mention, just buy stuff that you love and if it doesn't serve you anymore, get rid of it. I'd love to hear more of your thoughts down below. And if there are any other kinds of videos and topics that you would like to see on this channel, then also leave those two. Would love to give those a read. But anyways, I'll leave this very lengthy video right here. Thank you as always for watching and I will catch you in my next one.